Hello again, this is Dr. George Gonzalez, the founder of Quantum Neurology, and we're continuing our conversation on the most important nerve corrections in the foundation of neurological health. We'd already covered crown nerve 10 and crown nerve 3, and now I want to demonstrate a pubic bone correction. The pubic bone correction may, may not seem like the obvious choice, but when you're dealing with physical injury, any torsion of the pelvis is going to cause imbalance from the right side to the left side, from the front to the back of the body. So when we square the pelvis, we have this ability to uh, reset the structure of the body. So everything we do after that is going to be beneficial and balanced in its structure. So let's begin by uh, bending the knees and feet flat on the table. And now feet are together and I'm going to place my hands on the upper distal thigh here, not on the knees, but on the distal thigh, and you're going to squeeze together. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Excellent. Now, I don't know if you can tell on that angle, but I have my hands together. So when, when the squeeze is happening, they're actually pushing against themselves instead of against, I'm trying to do all this with my chest and arm muscles. Because we have some athletes that are much, much stronger than me, and they can really hurt you if, if you're not cautious. So you want to make sure that you cross your, your hands, that they're touching, and then go ahead and squeeze so that they're actually resisting against themselves. And you want to give a, a little bit of an impulse, and you may get a, a pubic bone audible correction there. Now what this, in my opinion, is doing is it's helping square the pelvis. It's not a 100% correction. There may be some other things you have to check. But in terms of unlocking the balance of the body, I feel that there's a very strong correction to be a foundation correction for further uh, biomechanical corrections. So one more time, let's look at this. We have the adductor muscles that are pulling. So what that's doing is it's pulling evenly on that pelvis to square that uh, pubic symphysis and the inanimate bones together uh, in, in the proper orientation. So one more time, I'm placing my hands together and I'm on the distal uh, femur and go ahead and squeeze. And then I give a little bit of an impulse and that if they have that issue, you'll hear an audible correction and then you can continue on with uh, more advanced biomechanics and neurological corrections. From here, we're gonna take, uh, bring the legs down and we're gonna test S1. S1 is the sacral nerve. So remember, we were talking about parasympathetic, cranial and sacral. Uh, the S1 is the parasympathetic nerve supply to the sexual organs, bowel, and bladder. So when we test this muscle, we are associating this to the, uh, the shared nerve supply of these organs. Now, when I test this, it's the peroneus tertius muscle, which brings the foot up and outward. So on both feet, that's what it would look like if you're not familiar with this test. Now, the idea is any muscle test is about bringing the muscle or the, the part of the body back to neutral position. So whatever that action may be, in this case, I'm going to stabilize her heel and I'm going to do like an ice cream scoop motion to bring her foot back to the neutral position. And she actually has a weakness here. This is a real weakness. And now on this side, she is strong. So the patient can really notice a difference if one side is strong and one side is weak. And what's important here is to tell the patient, as soon as that's weak, you say, this nerve shares nerve supply with the sexual organs, bowel, and bladder. You want to make sure they understand the importance of these connections and the importance of their nerve supply. I'm going to take her fingertips. I don't want to use my fingertips because, you know, male-female interaction, and we're working in the, the pelvis area, the inguinal area. So I want to pick up the patient's fingertips and I place it in the middle of the inguinal that's in between the pubic bone and the ASIS. So right in the center, that's our point for S1. I come back down and I retest and she has full strength with resistance. Take your fingers away and now hold strong and now this goes back to weakness. Now why does that happen? I call this anchoring. In, in other techniques, such as in applied kinesiology, it's called therapy localization. It's the exact same concept, but because I deal a lot with neurologists, I like the, the term anchoring because it demonstrates the 
uh, physicality of what we're doing right now. So we're physically anchoring that action so that this nerve could fire appropriately. And that's strengthened. But when she takes that away, it shuts right off. Again, we talked about this in the first video as neuro creating neurological recognition in the body. Her body is not recognizing this weakness because as soon as we take those fingers away, she goes weak again. So what we're going to do is we're going to use light therapy and we're going to just have you hold this over the spot, just like that. And now we went from a weak muscle now to a fully strong muscle without any physical correction. That's just the power of light therapy. Light therapy, in my opinion, is amplifying the ability for the nerves to communicate through their light field. Now, we demonstrate this with this correction, but after this correction, I explain the light therapy is going to have benefit, but it's not going to be the same as if we do a full correction. I feel that uh, the best correction is a physical correction with an energetic correction. So the energetic correction being the light therapy, the physical correction being either manual manipulation or using an instrument to make a correction. Let's show you how to do this manually. So I contact that, that point in the mid inguinal and I press down and it's not a toggle move. A toggle move presses down and then releases. I'm just going to patient tolerance and then I release my hands. I can also combine this with the specific nerve actions of S1. S1 has three specific nerve actions. It has peroneus tertius bringing the toes up and out. It has curling the toes, like making a fist with your feet. And then it also has pushing the gas pedal motion, uh, pointing the toes downward. So those are the three different actions we could use while we're using light therapy and a physical correction. So let's do that. First, we're gonna have you bring the feet up and out. And big deep breath in and out. And I remove my hands. We're gonna do that again with toes curled. Curl the toes. And big deep breath in and out. Excellent. And we're gonna have you press on the gas pedal. And big deep breath in and out. Excellent. So I can turn off the, the light stimulus and we can recheck the nerve now. So I come back and S1 now, without any other stimulus on the body, is completely strong with resistance. It is considered uh, impossible by neurological standards. When somebody has nerve damage, it's considered that they have uh, three to six months to recover from that before there's permanent nerve damage. And what we can demonstrate oftentimes with quantum neurology is the ability to re restore nerve function, nerve actions, whether that's motor, uh, cranial nerve, sensory, visceral, uh, autonomic actions. So these are the actions that we work towards making corrections. Now I also want to demonstrate doing these corrections with an instrument. I like using the impact uh, Arthur stim, and I like this because one, I don't have to get in the personal area so much because the instrument does that for me. And so I'm in the middle inguinal, and I could just tap and have you uh, pronus tertius bring the feet up and out and make that correction. And I could add light therapy on top of that. I could have her curl her toes, and I can make the correction with the light therapy. And now I can have her press on the gas pedal and I can make that correction. Okay, so all these actions are very powerful and very easy to use. One thing that I want everybody to recognize is how fast quantum neurology is. We're able to evaluate step by step throughout the entire nervous system. It only takes about a minute, minute and a half once you really understand how to do these tests in sequence to evaluate the entire nervous system myotones and cranial nerves.